Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I am of the stars. And I'd like to talk to you about um, shyness, that kind of shyness that is listed in psychology as uh, syndrome, you know, shy syndrome or something like that. And uh, the notions of societal expectations and repression of emotion. Uh, I feel that shyness is actually a quality, a soul quality that needs to be carefully uh, cultivated out of existence right now. Um, and for those that are particularly shy, very, very shy, it's very, very important to do this f during the awakening. Uh, and the reason for this is, to me it seems, shyness is, is caused by oversensitivity to societal expectations, sometimes uh, congruent with uh, greater clarabilities than most people have. Greater clarabilities um, plug us into the astral comments of people regarding our behavior. So yeah, I've noticed that when I do something that somebody doesn't, doesn't like, they immediately lash it out at me on the astral plane, almost invariably. They, they'll say things like, uh, in an unconscious way, things like, oh, her, I don't want to have anything to do with her again, you know, or oh, her, she's this or she's that, like that, right? And that can be, for the, for the person who is very clear, that can be daunting. You wonder if there's anything you can do right, because we have to follow our own hearts, right, in order to be happy in the world. And at the same time, we would like other people to be happy with us being around, which is not always possible, right? So it's an interesting uh, balance that we, that we as human beings create in our lives, the, the balance between following our hearts and, and, and basically kowtowing to the wishes of other people. In other words, societal expectations. I think one of the things that, that we need to do in order to overcome uh, this, this concern about that and, and actually brutal force being applied on the astral plane with regard to that uh, sometimes incessantly, if we have lots of friends, uh, peer pressure, what they say. Um, I think the thing to do is to develop uh, diplomatic negotiating skills. I'm reminded of um, uh, Benjamin Franklin. Boy, what a diplomat. He always got what he wanted, you know, and yet... He was so clever about it. He just really studied that topic. He knew what to do to get other people to, um, to be pleased with him and to still have what he wanted in the world. So Benjamin Franklin kind of attitude towards what other people want, diplomacy and yet following our heart, I, I kind of think. And I, I suggest that for the, for, the, for the shy person, this extraordinarily shy person. Um, also, I'd like to speak a little to um, the extreme instance of a very shy person who uh, represses um, soul desires, soul purpose, and like that, in order to um, in order to avoid social criticism, you know, and actually is is unable to live uh, a normal life because. Actually, they don't even want to be around people because they're worried about all that, you know. Uh, it creates uh, in the unconscious mind like a welter or a wailing of um, uh, negativity, negative emotions, uh, repressed negative emotions. And in the extreme instance, these can be acted out when the person uh, falls asleep or is on this edge of the dream time realm. Um, suddenly taking over are these um, repressed emotions in a state of um, in a state of acting out on the astral plane yeah the things that that are upsetting and repressed right so those things might be for instance the desire for sex uh, which expresses as astral rape and the desire for um, control which expresses may express as obsessing another individual and actually taking over their physical form. The desire for, for, for a, a killing out of ang repressed anger. And so these two, the desire for sex and uh, the anger that's repressed, 
can result in, for the person who is, has many clear abilities, many um, psychic superpowers, uh, might result in their taking over another person um, and uh, their personality is, is set aside, their minds are set aside for a minute for this, this person who is very shy, stepping into a role in the world that has been repressed, right, because of concern for societal expectations. And in that, in that other person's psyche can, can be created a, a real-life scene of acting out rape or killing or torture, all that stuff. Right, very unusual situation. Very unusual, and uh, regaining consciousness, the the very shy person might never know that they had done that thing. So, so a heads up regarding uh, people who are born, for instance, with great psychic abilities. All right, and shyness. Uh, I think that. Being born with great psychic abilities indicates an imbalance of the chakras. I've talked about different ways of, of taking care of that. You can research it online, how to balance the chakras, right? But having great psychic abilities means a greatly overbalanced third eye point, I think. Um, in terms of awareness, the awareness is probably placed there all the time. The third eye point <clears throat> is very far physically from the, from the sexual chakra. And consequently, um, imbalance of this sort, imbalance uh, in favor of the third eye point, can result in greatly repressed sexual desires. The same goes for desire to control the world, third chakra, negative, and desire to, um, to, uh, to kill, uh, first chakra, negative. So the person who is a third eye point overbalanced may uh, have these negative energy strands in the lower triangle, the, um, the gut brain, without actually knowing it because awareness is so f placed on, physically, on the physical plane so far from that area. So in this type of situation, the thing to do is to pay very close attention to ch balancing out every single chakra every day until it becomes second nature for the body to express itself in a balanced way. That's what I think. Don't miss a chakra, right? Just every single chakra up, all the way up every day. Uh, some cultures really value uh, psychic abilities. And uh, I've noticed, for instance, the movement in India recently um, with a special um, symbol, kind of a magic symbol that's used uh, based on the legend of the elephant god who had two wives, Rivi and Siddhi. And uh, this has to do with um, with acquiring wealth through psychic abilities. Uh, there has been a, a thread of energy like that in, in India all along, uh, all down through the ages, but right now it seems to be on the rise. And uh, I feel that, personally feel, from my own ethical standpoint, that acquiring wealth through spiritual uh, powers is unethical, highly unethical, and that others, as the, as the awakening continues, will begin to catch on to all this and that a stop will be put to it fairly soon quite soon. In ancient times, there was a cult called the, the Thuggy cult. I can't, it comes from the word thug, I think, the Thuggy cult in India. And these were people just like that, highway robbers, brigands, murderers, and so forth, who had psychic abilities and who were famous throughout India and, and uh, treated with respect because everyone was terrified of them, you know. These people, these Thuggies, have gone on to the, to the astral plane after dying and in the old days they used to, to walk right into other people's bodies right away so that they didn't experience that cleansing process on the astral plane which also involves soul education for many many years instead they walked straight into other people's bodies and displaced their souls and uh, in the old days and just continued on with their thuggy ways you know and but now 
as they pass on, what's happening is there's just no place and no body on Earth that has astral matter suitable for their habitation. And so they're stuck on the astral plane and slowly, I think, being transferred and removed elsewhere. So there's no future in it for, for the Riddy and the City thing. I can understand it as an end times phenomenon, but I can't understand it as an awakening phenomenon. So we get to choose. We get to choose chakric balance, up and down, total chakric balance, or we get to choose imbalance, which will require relocation or a very long timeline that brings us back into sync with the eternal now where we all really are. <laughs> well, whatever we choose, it's okay, you know. Uh, that's really all I have to say about this, is really on the topic of shyness and uh, also on the topic of psychic superpowers, a little bit on societal expectations and repression of emotions and chakric balancing. I wish you all the very best. I, I, I hope that all of us will proceed into the age of the Great Awakening with the, with the most balanced chakras and the most neutral minds and the ability to light up the world with our joy and love and peace. <laughs> so I had a thought about the sh issue of shyness and superpowers. <clears throat> it seems to me like what I was talking about just then only has to do with uh, the superpower balancing and rebalancing chakras. Um, and for the shyness aspect of that um, syndrome, I, I'm thinking that behavioral therapy might be useful and also of support groups with other shy people in a, in a physical rather than virtual setting might be good. And there may be many other ways to desensitize uh, people to the, uh, that feeling of shyness uh, in that extreme instance of shyness syndrome. But psychology already knows about all that, I think. So. And what do you know, I have another postscript regarding extreme shyness and societal expectations. I would say that in the extreme instance of shyness, a person can't really distinguish between themselves and uh, other people's expectations of them. In other words, they haven't developed that that frontal ability to to that barrier of the ego against other people's opinions, and so they may slip into uh, complete identification with someone else very easily. They may step out onto the astral plane, and their whole mind and psyche and emotions may uh, become, as it were the mind and psyche and emotions of another person or any number of series of people. Um, they identify so fully with uh, other people's opinions of them. It, I think that's the root and source of that problem. Huh. Kind of hard to pin them down. <laughs> so basically you could say they're so terrified to be themselves that, they're, that they step into other people's personalities just like that and become them. It's it's strange thing to hear on the astral plane to hear them say uh, they say and now I will be this and such of a person and then suddenly they're that person's voice on the astral plane right and and then they they segue into their own soul wounding uh, and so in flavor in in emotional flavor it becomes like the person the very shy person who has the great psychic abilities and who's very, very afraid to be representing themselves, it had their repressed emotions and all that, are showing up with the astral voice of the person that they are scooping into on the soul plane, happening over and over again with any number of different personalities that they've heard about or that they know someone who has heard about. Huh. It's almost like living your life as an actor in other people's uh, plays, like becoming, becoming other people and never being oneself. Yeah, it's very interesting to me because 
because it's so very different from the way that I am, you know? <laughs> so, um, I can understand it though, having grown up on the East Coast where social opinion is so very important. It's very important, you know? You get more in tune with the tyranny of societal expectations when you dress in an alternative way. You, you begin to realize that people judge other people not on the basis of soul qualities, but purely on the basis of the make and uh, uh, pattern and uh, color of the clothes they wear, typically. It's that superficial. You know, I like you or I don't like you based on whether you're dressed for success in our group. So I just wonder about that. I wonder about people. I wonder how they can do that to each other. You know, I just wonder. How are we going to get past that in order to step into the all? What miracle is God going to accomplish here? <laughs> This same lack of egoic identification might cause a very shy person to overcompensate by attempting to mind control other people so that their minds are blank and the shy person's mind is free to express itself without concern for their opinions and expectations. So, one more comment. It's possible in the shyness syndrome that uh, extreme shyness and the development of uh, great psychic superpowers are circling around each other in a kind of a figure eight where, where one sustains the other and uh, fuels the other. Because uh, if a person is born very shy, and too timid to communicate with other people, then the development of psychic superpowers would be very important because it would allow them to get in touch with other people uh, on the psychic plane, on the astral plane. Uh, on the other hand, other people might not be able to get in touch with them and so might develop a situ situation that feels to other people who are not psychically inclined that they're being manipulated, that they're being controlled. Um, by this other person who is in fact super shy. Um, and say for those born with, with psychic superpowers, um, shyness might be the result because they might know uh, what other people are thinking and how other people are judging them. Uh, even as tiny infants, that might put them off from talking to other people. So in that way, a figure eight, say, with two little protons circling around, circling around infinitely, or maybe a circle like that. <laughs> One being um, extreme shyness and the other psychic superpowers. It, it, either, if either one of those is shortcutted, if, if for instance there's behavioral therapy or group therapy that, that uh, allows people, these, these uh, shy people to get more in touch and speak with other people without fears, or if there's a uh, chakric balancing that allows the psychic abilities to do come into play equally with all the other chakras, then that whole figure eight or circular motion will be, I think, stopped. And the whole thing will, will settle into a more uh, happily sustainable heart chakra situation. So, what do you have when you have extreme shyness and uh, psychic superpowers together in one person? It's like a, a perpetual emotion machine. Uh, it's like a, a, a circle of energies, uh, it, each opposed to the other, repelling the other. One is great power, and the other is great fear. So that creates a constantly moving circle of opposed forces uh, in the personality, part of the personality. And this may, in fact, be what makes up personality is opposing pairs of forces like this. I wonder what bird that is. Oh, it's a person. <laughs> so could these be the elements of personality? Uh, the, the negatively aspected energy flow that makes up 
the duality play and could these be the elements that are resolving right now uh, this sort of thing and may there be many other such pairs that make up the entanglement of the electromagnetic field and the etheric net the soul wounding well time will tell